Imagine that you give your car to a friend for a trip. At his return, he gives you back the car, but he forgets to fill up with gas. Problem, the gasoline gauge is broken. So how much gas did he exactly consume? This question is quite similar to what we want to know for reactors. Could you imagine a nuclear reactor as a car motor, but instead of burning oil, use plutonium to heat a coolant, in our case sodium, that powers a turbine and creates electricity. But where does heating energy come from? From the plutonium, that has the particularity to have a nucleus that can break in two parts when interacting with neutrons, the nuclear fission. This releases a tremendous amount of energy, but more important, the fission creates extra neutrons that can induce other fission, and we call it chain reaction. Many phenomena inside the reactor influence the chain reaction and push it to increase or decrease it. In operation, we want all these forces to be balanced, and for that we use control words. While producing power, the reactor consumes plutonium and creates waste. This phenomenon is called fuel depletion. By changing the quantity of atoms inside the reactor, the forces of each phenomenon on the chain reaction change. The result of all that being that the reactor has lost some force, as if it was tired. This lost force, due to fuel depletion, is named reactivity loss, and is counterbalanced by the extraction of the control rod that favors the chain reaction and keeps the balance between forces. To understand perfectly all the forces involved in this balance, we need to know at any time the quantity of atoms inside the reactor. The knowledge of this quantity is also important for us because they are the starting point of many other studies, like safety studies, how much plutonium will be recycled, how much waste will be stored, along many other topics. So how do we know exactly the composition inside the reactor? Don't worry, it's been a long time since we have computational tools that can give us the composition inside the reactor and each of the different forces. But these tools rely on hypotheses that influence directly the results. The question is then, how accurate are these tools on this composition? The process to respond to that question is called experimental validation and needs to be done by comparing the tool with a real reactor where this phenomenon occurs. So now the question becomes, how can we validate experimentally the tool without the experimental value, because unfortunately, we can check inside the reactor the real composition. But as the fuel depletion induces the reactivity loss, doing the experimental validation on the reactivity loss can give us insights about fuel depletion. And during my PhD, I analyzed the reactivity loss of the Phoenix reactor in order to validate experimentally the fuel depletion for a recent tool, the Darwin FA package. But we need to be careful. Knowing the accuracy on the reactivity loss doesn't give directly the accuracy on fuel depletion, because being good for the reactivity loss does not mean that you are good on every effect that contributes to it. You can also be bad everywhere, but lucky. After all, a broken watch gives you the right time twice a day. So we need to go deeper by separating each phenomena influenced by the fuel depletion. For instance, how temperature changes affect the chain reaction, how much of the initial strength of the control rods has been lost, and many others. Respond to all of these questions will allow us to quantify and class all of these phenomena, and only after that we'll have an idea of the accuracy of our tool on fuel depletion, how the hypothesis influences the results and potentially correct them, and determine which phenomena are really important to consider for a given purpose when fuel depletion is involved.